So gamers have been waiting a long time for some much needed competition in the GPU space and we have two companies AMD and Nvidia but it seems as though two companies isn't really enough to drive home change. Now fortunately we have Intel who is finally going to be releasing their first desktop GPU. Now this is going to be called the DG1 and while the product isn't all that exciting because it's based off of their integrated graphics this is a step in the right direction and uh, this should be pretty exciting news for everybody who's been waiting for some competition and uh, we're going to be talking about the DG1 today and how that performs but also we're going to be talking about the DG2 now this one is the one that gamers should be waiting for this is the one that's going to be competing with Nvidia and AMD's current lineup of graphics cards so that's what we're going to be doing today we're going to talk about DG1 and DG2 so this article comes from video cards and the headline is Intel enters desktop DGPU market with Asus and Colorful and I'm not going to read you the whole article because I just wanted to show you the photos for these GPUs and as you can see on the right hand side there the GPU has a heatsink on it so it's not all that powerful now video cards also writes Intel has recently announced its Iris XE Max discrete graphics card for laptops the announcement basically means that the same GPU will be used for discrete desktop graphics now as you can see there from the specs uh, this is pretty much identical to the laptop GPU except that this one is clocked higher so this one is clocked at 1650 megahertz for the XE Max and I think the uh, laptop variant was only clocked at 1300 megahertz so uh, this is clocked a little bit higher but performance uh, was expected to be uh, relatively similar now why would they want to bring this uh, GPU uh, into uh, desktop PCs and that's because they want to uh, keep selling their older CPUs like their 8th gen and 9th gen P uh, GP uh, CPUs so uh, these 8th gen and 9th gen CPUs have older integrated graphics so now they can bump that up to this new Iris XE Max uh, discrete graphics so it's going to be a little bit better than uh, what they had in the past but it's not going to be mind-blowing performance now apparently according to this article from Extreme Tech the Intel's Iris Xe Mac discrete GPU is slower than the integrated version. Now I'm guessing that because it's now operating from a PCI lane that it has a longer distance to travel for this data so it could be that and the fact that the integrated graphics version is actually on the CPU and the article doesn't really say although they do speculate a little bit I'll leave a link in the description below so you can go check out the whole article but they did test out this um, discrete GPU GPU already and they tested it in four games and I'm just going to leave you the slides up so that you can check uh, the results yourself but essentially the uh, laptop and the desktop variant perform relatively similar though the uh, desktop variant is actually a little bit slower now both of these XE GPUs perform about the same as a GTX 1650 Ti it's a little bit slower than that but uh, you can expect performance to be about 10 to 20 percent less than the 1650 Ti. So that's the DG1, not all that exciting of a product but uh, before I go into DG2 I do want to go over Intel's GPU philosophy and they have four branches or I guess uh, this is one architecture and four micro architectures so they have XELP which is their integrated graphics branch then they have their XEHP which is their data centers and XEHPC will be for their supercomputers and they'll also have XEHBG which is for gamers now Intel's chief architect for GPUs Raja Kaduri actually tweeted this out today and he tweeted out this die shot of the XEHPC GPU so as you can see there there's actually two GPUs on the die and what's interesting here is that uh, AMD as you uh, might have seen from my previous video on Navi 31 they are also going to a multi GPU approach and I guess that is one way for companies like AMD and Intel uh, to catch up in terms of GPU performance and if you can have two GPUs on the one die you can double the performance that you can normally get and then you can make smaller dies and your yields are going to be better this slide shows that the XEHP has scalability so you can have one tile or you can have up to four tiles for the XEHP GPU which is for data centers 
Now, Tom's Hardware actually talked about this a while back, back on August the 13th, so it is a long time ago, but uh, there were some interesting thoughts in this article, and he writes that uh, the XEHP appears to be 512 execution units, so uh, this could be the equivalent of 4096 shader cores, uh, if we're comparing it with AMD and NVIDIA GPUs, and AMD's big Navi is supposed to have 5,120 shader cores, so this could be maybe about 20% behind if we're talking about a single tile for Intel. Tom's Hardware also writes that Intel's ability to scale to a two-tile solution linked with EMIB might also solve the scaling problem we've seen with SLI and Crossfire. The two tiles would simply appear as a single GPU, maybe, meaning there's even a potential for a two-tile XEHBG solution that could theoretically crush any current GPU. So this part of Tom's Hardware's article goes into speculation mode, and it takes this official slide from Intel uh, where it says that this XEHP GPU for a one-tile solution performs at around 10 teraflops, so then it tries to scale that for a gaming GPU, the XEHBG, and it says that if they took out some of this extra stuff out of this XEHP and add in some more uh, execution units, clock it at around 1.7 gigahertz, then uh, it could potentially perform at around 17 teraflops, which would put it a little bit above a 3070. Now, I would expect that if this was that one tile solution of 512 execution units, this would probably be around a 3070. So we're probably looking at around a 3070 to 3060 Ti level GPU from Intel uh, for the XEHPG uh, DG2 solution. So that about does it for this video. If you have any questions about Intel's new GPUs, leave a comment down below and I'll try to get to your question. And if you like this video, make sure to click the like button and also to subscribe to this channel for more videos like this and I'll see you in the next one.